we begin the solemn, sacred three days, which are of very short duration, really, in terms of our trying to capture the great mysteries that we celebrate during these days. And that's why we have the octave of Easter coming up, the eight days after Easter, so that we can allow ourselves to bask in the glory of Christ, our light. Tonight, our three words are adoration, reverence, and charity. Because our celebration tonight is all about the deepest sort of charity. And those words will help us to unpack so much of what is contained in the life, the mystery, the mystery of charity in Christ. Today, Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist. The second and third reading reminded us of that. And while we save celebrating the Eucharist with less restraint because of the seriousness of this night, we reserve that for Corpus Christi, we have to remember how important adoration is. Our first word. Pope Benedict said many times that we cannot eat unless we have first adored, quoting St. Augustine. Adoration is like the air we breathe. Sometimes people will say to me, Bishop, we don't see you with adoration. Then I say, that's right, because the bishop is so blessed that he has his own chapel. And when I'm in there, you can't see me. And you have to admit, if you had your own chapel, you wouldn't go running all over town to a door right there. Adoration is like the air we breathe. When we look at Jesus in his glorified humanity, when we adore his sacred heart, the heart that never stops beating with love for us, the heart that speaks to our heart. It's so intimate a moment when we adore, second only to the moment of actually partaking of the Eucharistic bread, which contains the total Christ, body and blood, soul and divinity. Adoration is never a waste of time. Adoration can be hard for the beginner. The question keeps coming up, well, I did this and I did this and I did this and what am I going to do next? I've only been here 20 minutes and I want to stay an hour. What am I going to do next? And that's vintage American. We get to think that we're there doing something for God. And since there's really nothing we can do for God, we get frustrated at adoration under the influence of the devil. I just can't stay here anymore. Silence 
is not so much for doing as for being receptive. And to learn silence in adoration is to let God speak through our thoughts, through our feelings, but to listen hard to him. And in order really to adore, we've got to sit there at the beginning and just give the Lord time when nothing seems to be happening. God doesn't need to warm up in order to speak to us, but we need to warm up. And just get into the mode of silence where we're comfortable. Where it's not so much of a burden. Where it's not so much of an effort. For younger people, that's tough. Because silence is hard to come by. And not only can't you have silence... But when you don't have silence, Lady Gaga is usually filling the vacuum, or perhaps something worse. I'm going to have to catch up now on what's worse out there. I hear there are things out there that are worse, but I'm not aware of them yet. So some of you young people, prepare to fill me in. To get comfortable being quiet, and then the Lord certainly speaks, not necessarily with words, because when a loving married couple speak to one another most deeply, they usually don't use words. And it's like that. Adoration is the beginning of charity. And adoration leads us to reverence toward one another. Adoration makes of you and me a reverent person so that we're always reverent toward one another. And what kind of reverence is that? It's not simply giving a few dollars to a beggar as you pass by in a hurry. So that's a very good thing to do. But it's not simply that. It's more personal it's more intimate. The reverence that comes from adoration is expressed by the washing of the feet. That is the prime example that Jesus gave us of reverence for one another. And if you put adoration and reverence together, Adoration plus reverence toward one another equals charity according to the mind of Christ. There are lots of different kinds of charity. And there are even more different kinds of love. But charity, according to the mind of Christ, expresses itself best in foot washing. And so when we adore and we're reverent to one another, some or other kind of foot washing follows. Now what do I mean by that? Are we going to start to make little kits with a basin and a pitcher so that at the drop of a hat you can do foot washing? Remember, Jesus washed the feet of the twelve, including Judas, right before Judas betrayed him. 
Jesus' presence to the Father, Jesus' reverence for other human beings whom he came to save, he loved them so much. Jesus' reverence was such a habit that he even personally chose to wash Judas's feet. That's where foot washing really gets to be foot washing. When you give the benefit of the doubt to your worst enemy, that's foot washing. When you allow charity to be restored towards someone who has hurt you terribly, That's foot washing. When you allow somebody to approach you who has sought to damage your reputation, your good name, that's foot washing. It includes giving a few bucks to the beggar as you pass by, but it goes far beyond that. When you wash the other's feet, you're probably forgiving or being forgiven. You look into the other's eyes with a look of acceptance and love and peace. If you're going to wash the other's feet, you don't rush it. I'm not going to rush it tonight, largely because I can't get up and down that fast. <laughs> but you don't rush it. Adoration plus reverence equals charity. The charity of Christ comes from there. And if it doesn't come from there, it might be some kind of human goodwill or philanthropy, but it is not the charity of Christ. Charity with the charity of Christ begins with adoration, passes through reverence to our fellow human beings, and finally ends in the washing of the feet. And so tonight, we commit ourselves to be good foot washers, usually without the basin and the pitcher, but with a heart that has adored that has lived a life of reverence toward others during the day, and then in whatever way, reaches out in a personal way, in warmth, without a rush, to wash the feet of the others. Adoration, reverence, charity. That's our beautiful feast tonight. And let's take advantage of the moments of Eucharistic adoration that we will have in a little while to renew our conviction that if our charity doesn't start with adoration, then it is not the charity which Jesus Christ died to pour out upon the world. Praise be Jesus Christ.